The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Gateway's online church service today. Let me tell you a quick order of the... Wait, no, 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 no. Before I tell you anything, I got to tell you the joke of the day. We got to do the joke of the day as a way of boosting your mood. Everybody's stressed out, cooped up at home with their kids, and they need some jokes. Jim Gaffigan says, I used to wonder why I had hair on my legs, but now I know that it's for toddlers to pull themselves up off the ground while I scream in pain. That's pretty good. Thanks, Jim. All right, here's how the order of the service is gonna go. Sound good? Ready? One, two, three, go. The other night I heard the Father say a couple things I want to share with every one of you because I think it might be encouraging. It's really easy to get swept away into anxious thinking without realizing we've done so, but we were doing some listening prayer the other night and as soon as we started praying it was like, whoosh, here comes God's presence and here comes God's voice. And I was like, oh, there you are. And he's like, where have you been? And then he said this. He said, it's so important for you to soak in my love during this time because nothing about this time has changed anything between you and me. The gospel is unchanged. I'm unchanged. I'm exactly how I've always been. My mood is the same. I'm not shaken. So you can be unshaken. Stay awed by grace. Stay filled with the Spirit and overjoyed about your salvation. Unplug from the world and plug in to heaven. Elevate. Take the time to worship me. So let's not neglect our basic spiritual disciplines during this time. They're actually much more important than usual, even though the temptation will be to neglect them more than usual. Take the time to worship me. Elevate. So let's link into heaven. God, invade every home with your presence. Breathe peace on your people. Receive our worship. We give you our hearts. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs>
on Broken Communion. All right, here's Sherry Bontrager Thomas with a thought for the kids. Take it away, Sherry. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Um, it's just Miss Sherry and my family right here. You can see um, our dogs. That's Lacey and Pepper. Pepper is also known as Razor Tooth Fluff Butt. And over here, we've got Caramel. Hi, Caramel. And in here, we've got Legos and some girls relaxing on Saturday morning. And just wanted to have our toilet roll people read to you some verses here. So let me turn my camera, see if I can get this to work. Psalm 92, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to pre proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening. So, um, I don't know about you guys and how you're doing and what you're thinking and what you're feeling. I am trying to look um, in these days and, and looking for what's good going on in the world. I have a whole list. Go back later and pause the video right now to find out what Miss Sherry's thankful for. Um, which maybe I'll let you know what's on that list some other time. Let me show you out here. I've really been enjoying um, being able to be home and off work. Um, God's reminding me things about how the flowers that are just growing up in the grasses are so beautiful and they're trusting Him. Um, they just keep proclaiming His goodness. Here's some more of them. Things you don't usually even really notice. Um, out here is my garden. Got to plant my raspberry bushes. Right here, they're coming out. Aren't they pretty? Soon they're going to have really nice fruit on them. Here's my mint tea coming up. I planted a couple new mint tea beds. And my compost pile where we turn um, our food scraps into dirt again. And in here we have some little tiny strawberry plants coming up. Oh, they're going to be delicious in a month or two. And we got an asparagus sprout coming up, which I love. And here's all the weeds that I pulled out this week. Lots of weeds that were just choking up the good earth. Um, enjoying my flowers and my birds. Um, so I just wanted to check in with you guys and remind you that we love you. Um, praying for each of you, praying creativity and um, good times with your family. And just... Um, Trusting, being able to trust God no matter what's going on around you, no matter what things are on your mind, that you know that God loves you and that we love you. And um, I just want to, I'll check in with you guys maybe this coming week and see if I can um, see how you guys are doing individually. Love you. Bye. Hey guys, uh, this is for the youth group. Um, it's pretty much the same thing that I said Wednesday. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. Don't just think in your, about your own affairs. Think about others. Especially during this uh, time that, you know, we have to be at home. And there's not enough groceries. And there's, like, bigger problems that this um, virus is bringing to other people. So think about others. Pray for them. And, see, and if there's any way that you can help them, help them. Okay? Other than that, uh, we'll see you live on Wednesday. So hopefully more girls try to participate on this uh, this time bye good morning um, I'm Doug I'm the secretary of Gateway Fellowship we're fighting coronavirus this <laughs> week so, <laughs> so, some announcements uh, birthdays this week uh, June Gonzalez today so happy birthday June uh, Chloe Hibbs on Wednesday the 25th and Nikki Gonzalez on Saturday the 28th. So happy birthday to you three. Um, DTS will be live streamed again this Thursday starting at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, youth group, you're going to meet again this Wednesday via Instagram starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, small groups are scheduled for this Wednesday. Um, it's up to your discretion whether you want to meet or not. Um, if you don't want to meet physically, then Zoom, Facebook, Instagram are always options. Um, so uh, 
you guys do what you feel led to do. Our spring frolic is tentatively scheduled for Saturday morning, April 18th. Coronavirus measures may prohibit that, but we'll see. Uh, helps needed to clean, weed, mulch, plant, and generally beautify the building and the grounds. Uh, if we're able to have it, the frolicking will start at 8 a.m. and will continue until around noon. Surely I am not the only person that when they hear the word frolic, they picture like a group of dudes wearing later hosen and <laughs> skipping and dancing in a circle. Stan and Tim are probably going to do the streaming prayer meeting um, like they did this past Wednesday, every Wednesday, uh, instead of every other until we're back on our regular schedule. And lastly, if you're able, please don't forget to continue to tithe. Uh, so you know, if you're still making money, and you're, you feel able, uh, you can give online at BeDisciples.com slash give. Or if you're a check writing type of person, we do have a post office box if you'd rather send a check. And, and again, pray about that. You know, we know uh, everybody's situation is different. And um, you know, do what you can do and do what you have to do. I thought about a story that I heard one time about a man who was caught in a flood. And um, he was sitting on his front step and the flood waters were rising and a man in a rowboat came along. And the man in the rowboat said, come on, I'll, I'll take you to safety. And, and the man on the step said, yeah, thanks, but the Lord will save me. The Lord's gonna provide, he's gonna save me. So the water continued to rise and, and the man had to get up off the steps and get up into the uh, the front room and uh, as he was looking out the window um, a boat with a motor came along and the man in the boat said come on come on in we'll take you to safety and the guy in the house said no nope, um, the Lord's gonna save me I'm trusting in the Lord and eventually the waters got so high that the man had to get up on the roof and a helicopter came along while he was up there and and they sent down a, a tow line and and the man refused the tow line. He yelled up, he said, the Lord's going to save me. I'm, I'm trusting in the Lord. And eventually the house was swept away. The man drowned. And, and uh, when he went up to heaven, he saw the Lord. He said, Lord, why didn't you save me from that flood? And the Lord said, well, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. What else did you want me to do? And, and that kind of reminded me of, you know, there's, there's opportunities uh, out there all the time. We just, we have to see them. We have to be ready to take advantage of them. We have to listen, uh, listen to uh, the Lord speaking to us and, and what he wants us to do and act on it. You know, because if he gives us all these opportunities, we don't act on it. What good are we doing? Mm -hmm. So that's, I hope everybody has a good Sunday. And uh, hopefully we'll get back to church, uh, be able to meet together yeah, soon. Amen, amen to that. Dad. See you, buddy. And so he walked out of our lives forever. Hey, good morning, Gateway. I hope everybody's doing really well. Uh, Tim asked Rusty and I if we would do the offering prayer. And I thought, well, this is gonna be a challenge because with our work schedules, we're just kind of meeting and passing each other. And, and then he's remodeling some stuff in our house. And so I was like, well, I'll just set up where he is leaving again <laughs> so he'll be back uh, in the meantime I did want to share with you um, our youngest son Alex who was diagnosed with a Chiari malformation when he was three uh, received a healing we were having to do MRIs every six months for several years and he had a flare-up last month his neurosurgeon said get him in here we did the MRI and then we met with the neurosurgeon who was very dumbfounded to see that the Chiari was gone because they don't just go. They either get surgically repaired or they'll still show up on MRIs for years, even if a person's not having symptoms. So we wanted to share that with you because God never changes. He's in the miracle working business. And honestly, you can't yes, back up and they'll see you. This is Alex. Thank you. So we wanna pray and come into agreement with you that as you give, as you tithe, as you give an offering, as you give alms, that your trust is in 
God providing. That's right. And he will. No one's your provider except for God. That's right. So, Lord, we just thank you so yep. much for this day. We mm -hmm. thank you for your provision, your protection, how you continue to just teach us mm. to lean on you and trust in you. Okay. And that we walk by faith and not by sight. And that can be a challenge. And so, Lord, yep. I pray for every one of our Gateway family mm. members and, and their family and extended family. We pray uh, protection in health, mm. in finances, mm -hmm. in our relationships. Sure. Lord, we just thank you so much that we can come to you boldly <clears throat> to your throne mm. and ask and believe and receive. We thank yep. you so much. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. amen. Sad news from Australia today. The inventor of the boomerang grenade has died. <laughs> it's terrible. This is the worst. Colossians 1.18. Christ is the head of the body, his church. We've already seen that Jesus is massive, that he pre-exists everything and he made everything and everything exists because he is sustaining it with his almighty power, including the dinosaurs, fossils, the demons, the universes, the star systems, the galaxies, the black holes and everything that exists. So we have a much bigger Jesus than a lot of people have expected, which can allow us to have much greater confidence and peace in Jesus than many people are experiencing, especially right now in the world. And then we come to verse 18 where Paul says that Jesus not only is the Lord and ruler and maker of everything and sustainer of everything, but he also happens to be the head of his body, the church. Think about this. If, if we are the body and he is the head, that means he's the brain center. That means all the instructions are supposed to come from him to us. And just as in a regular body, if something happens to damage the spinal cord, like a neck injury or a back injury, you can become... Uh, disabled. You can no longer function, legs, arms, or what have you. If that's true physically in the body, that anything that disrupts the communication back and forth between the body and the brain uh, disrupts the function of the body, then in the spirit it's also true that anything that will disrupt our connection to Jesus will disrupt the function of us as people, of, of us as the body of Christ. Another thing that occurs to me is that leadership exists and some people would say oh the whole point of church leadership uh, is to uh, tell us what to do no the whole point of church leadership is not to tell us what to do the whole point of church leadership is to function kind of like a neck connecting the body of christ to jesus the head so that jesus is the one instructing and leading and guiding every single member of the body of christ every one of whom is unique and every one of whom is necessary. The other night at council meeting, it was there was a little joking going on back and forth with some people uh, saying, oh, I'm the gallbladder of the body of Christ. I'm the tonsils of the body of Christ. I'm the uh, appendix of the body of Christ. Oh, I'm the polyp of the body of Christ. They were joking, in other words, that you could remove them and it wouldn't really damage the body that much. Now, I wasn't laughing. I was annoyed. They were laughing. Uh, it is funny, but it's false. Uh, it's taking a good metaphor from the Bible about how important everyone is that Jesus gave every single person that is in Christ to the body as a gift for the common good. That's 1 Corinthians 12. That's Romans 12. Every single one of you is important. Every single one of you is essential. And sometimes what we will do is we will say, well, I'm the only one like me, so I'm not necessary or I'm not wanted. And sometimes that rejection is real, not imagined, but that doesn't make it right. Because whether or not you've been appreciated for who you really are, you should be appreciated for who you really are. And you should be valued for who you are and your contribution should be valued. Um, Jesus is the head of the body and he's given us each other as a gift. And as each one of us is vibrantly connected to him and then serve each other in love, the body becomes more and more the true expression of Jesus on planet Earth that it is meant to be. A couple other thoughts real quick. When Brian Connolly came last week, he shared a prophetic word. Well, it was all about Jesus. His whole prophetic word was about Jesus. And he talked about us returning to Jesus, the centrality of Jesus. One of the things he said was, Jesus is the root, John 15, Jesus is the vine, we're the branches, or if we're a tree, he's the root system of the tree. And if we're connected to the roots, if our roots go down deep into Jesus, then we'll bear good fruit. He said, we're returning to the roots, the roots of loving Jesus, serving Jesus, worshiping Jesus, communing with Jesus, and obeying Jesus. Notice how every single one of those was Jesus, 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 Jesus. He's the head of the body. 
All the life flows from him to us, and if we get disconnected from him, it's in trouble. At this point, please gather your kids and get your bread and grape juice ready. If they've wandered off, you can just probably pause this video too and make sure you're all ready. So now you have your bread and you have your grape juice. I'm, I'm mindful today that there are many who are scared of the future. There are some who are sick. There are many who are very troubled economically. And as we share this bread and this cup, we commemorate a Jesus who comes near, who carries our burdens and who carries our griefs who takes our sins on himself, but everything he takes on himself. And so there's healing in him, there's comfort in him, there's forgiveness in him, there's grace in times of need in him. So on the night that our Lord Jesus gave himself for us, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it as often as you do in remembrance of me. Now, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God, we ask you to pour out your spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus in order that we may be the body of Jesus sprinkled with your blood, your hands, your feet, your body in this world. Yeah, amen, amen. Lord Jesus, we receive you. We receive you. Sir, 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 please do not lick the cap. Sir. All right, now we're gonna switch over to the ministry time. I'm about to give a benediction, but for the ministry time, how about this? How about you message somebody and pray for them Write a prayer, send it to them, ask them how you can be praying for them and be a blessing to each other. Don't neglect the people in the room right next to you either. But let's do this thing. Let's be the body. Let's be the body. Encourage each other daily. Here's your benediction. May the God of all peace give... Could you be noisier? May the God of all... Here's your benediction. May the God of all peace strengthen you with hope and peace in believing. Amen. Amen. Prayer meeting on Wednesday. 7 p.m. Facebook Live. Me and Stan. Tim out.